Hello and welcome to Tutorial CU. My name is Yannick and I'm your instructor in this video. Let me explain you how you can make use of partial views in ASP.NET Core. But before we get started, make sure to hit the subscribe button right now because you don't want to miss any high quality C Sharp related videos. Now, before I show you how you can create and use partial views, I want to explain to you what partial views are in general and why you need them because they are definitely sort of best practice in ASP. Here I have an ASP.NET MVC application just set up and this is a block application. So here we have two block entries, one about coding, one about design. So this is the homepage. I also have, and you might know that from other block applications, I have other sites, something like the archive and here I also want to show my blog postings. Now it would be very bad practice if I go ahead and simply copy all of the styles that I have right here, all of the elements, right? Exactly 100% the same code. If I just take that and paste it here again, right? Because there are some principles we need to take care about, like dry, don't repeat yourself, right? So we should not simply copy the code multiple times because maybe later on there are even more sites where we want to display our blog posts. Now this is where partial views become very handy because you create a partial view and the partial view would only render, for example, those two blog postings here or how many ever you have, but it would not render the title right here, for example. So the partial view would only take care about rendering or displaying blog posts. And you could potentially use them in every view inside of your project. So for example, if you have a registration page, where you have a form where you can sign up and you want to show some blog articles there whatsoever, you can simply go ahead and render that partial view there and you're already done, right? So it's very handy because it's like a component. You can take the partial view and render it every now and then wherever you like. So our goal is to take that from the home page right here, to take the entries that we have, the blog postings, and put them into a partial view that we have to create. Afterwards, we will again render it here in the homepage and also in the archive. And we will not have to duplicate any code. So in the end, we have a partial based, let's call it component. Let me just show you the project that I've created here. But before I got some very, very exciting news for you, if you are interested in ASP.NET development or c -sharp development in general, we are about to launch a free Yes, you heard right, a free ASP.NET challenge. This is like a complete course. It takes five days and every day you will unlock another day and you will learn ASP.NET development. We call that five day challenge because every day you receive a programming task which you have to solve on your own. Also, during the whole five day challenge, we will build a complete application together. So definitely, and as I said, it's free. So it's a no brainer. Go ahead and pre-register for the launch. It won't take long until the challenge is available, so go ahead and sign up right now. You can find the link in the description. So the project that I have right here, it's very, very simple, right? This is a default MVC ASP uh, net core .NET 6 application and I got the home controller. I have a simple class here, it's called block entry, just an ID, category, title, content, and I created a static list that we can use because we don't wanna make use of a database right here. So this is just what it is and then it's pretty default stuff. I got the index page and the archive page here and the index page has that model. So I'm sending in the block entries. Let's take a look in the index page. You can see I set the model to the block entry here and then I just got some basic bootstrap styling from the page. I just copied it from the examples. I could show it right here, right? This is the example, block example of bootstrap. I just took that element, copied and pasted it and then simply replaced the values here with category, title, content, etc. So really basic ASP. Now, as I said, this is directly rendered in the index page. If we want to have that in the archive page too, or in the archive view, you could go ahead and copy that, but that would be bad practice as we have discussed earlier. So instead of that, now let's get to the topic where we create our partial view. So partial views usually have a prefix that you use and it's an underscore. So inside of your views folder, go into the home folder because our controller is called home controller, right click and add a new view. To indicate that this is a partial view, use the underscore prefix and call it block articles. .cs HTML, for example. Now let's remove what's inside here and go to the index.cs HTML. 
take the div that we have here, I will just remove it, right? So this is our index page. It now has only a title and a small paragraph. The model is still here visible, but we don't need it. So let me remove it, right? Only title and paragraph. Let me go to the blog articles again. Let me add the model here, model list of block entry. And then I paste the code again, add some formatting and we are done. Now we have that inside of our partial view. Now let's move to the home controller. We need to make adjustments because here we have the index action that would render the index page and would send in the model block entries and we no longer need that. So let's remove it. Okay, restart the application now. And you can see that we have no longer any content here on the home page. Archive also no content. And that's because we are not rendering our partial view. So let's do it right now. And that's the very interesting part, right? Oh, and if you liked the video, go ahead and give it a thumb up and definitely subscribe to our channel because you don't want to miss our content, believe me. Now inside of our home controller, let's create a new action that would actually render our partial view. Public I action result block articles partial, we can call it like this. So here we have the indicator or we are indicating that we are talking about the partial views. So we're simply adding a partial here, but that's just a nice to have. And the only thing that we have to do is to return a partial view. And this is where it's different from our action result right here or here, here return in a view, but here we return a partial view. We need to name it. Let's go ahead, block articles, because that's how our block articles view is called. And let's send in a model and the model are the block entries here from that static list. So let's simply paste it. Block entries, there we go. All right, now, how can we call that block articles method that we have right here to render it? And this is where we start using jQuery. For example, if you don't know jQuery in combination with ASP.NET, definitely make sure to check out our video. We have recorded the video, especially only on that topic. So go ahead and check it out if you don't know it and then come back to that video here. Let's switch to our index.cs HTML. If we want to write some JavaScript or some jQuery code, we need to add a section to our views. Add section. And the section needs to be called scripts and inside here we can create a script tag and inside of that script tag we can now write some javascript code now we just need to write a simple line of code but first we need to think where do we want to render the partial view so so just keep in mind we are inside of our index page and i want to say okay here i have a diff and inside of that diff i want to render the block articles so i go ahead and create an id for that so that i can access it from the JavaScript. Let's say partial zone, something like that. Now let's go into the script section here and use jQuery dollar sign. Now let's get that div by ID. So go ahead and grab that item partial zone. And then we simply go ahead and load the content for that div load. And now we simply add a URL. We go to the home controller and simply call this method right here, the block articles partial method, we can simply add it. And now that block articles is returning a partial view and that partial view will get rendered right here inside of that partial zone div. So this is how simple it is. Let's copy both of them, the div and the script section here, copy it. Let's bring it to the archive CS HTML. Here's our archive. I simply paste it here too. We got that partial zone and we got that script section, which is also rendering the partial here. When we now start the application, you will see that we have the block articles in the index page and also in the archive view. As you can see right here, it's rendered in the archive. It's also rendered and we have simply one file, the block articles partial view file to maintain the HTML and design. So if we want to make changes, we can simply do it here and it will get adjusted everywhere where it's rendered. So this is how and why you should use a partial view. Now again, the reminder, if you are interested in ASP.NET, check out our free challenge. It's about to be released, so don't miss it. It's completely free. Check the link in the description and pre-register for that amazing free deal. I mean, you are here to get educated, right? So this is a nice deal for you. If you want to see any other C Shop or ASP related videos, please write it down into the comments so that we know what you want to see on this channel.
Again, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching. See you next time. Have a great day.